Scientists knew something bad was unfolding. Satellite readings were showing the summer of 2019-20 was taking a serious toll on the Great Barrier Reef. So they measure the temperature of the water in real time and they forecast the likelihood of bleaching as they measure the accumulation of heat over the course of the summer. And there was no shortage of heat. February's sea surface temperatures were the highest ever recorded along the reef. And now researchers have seen the true extent of the bleaching for themselves. We did the surveys just as the country was shutting down, basically. So we did them as quickly as we could. Uh, so it was quite intense. 11 flights in nine days. That allowed them to survey more than a thousand reefs, each receiving visual scores. Underwater surveys were also undertaken to verify the scoring accuracy. The results are stark. The maps show in green reefs that have escaped bleaching each year. So this year we have green reefs in the northern part of the Great Barrier Reef, far offshore, and we have some green reefs in the southern part of the Great Barrier Reef, but far fewer than in earlier bleaching events. For the first time we have red reefs. Those are the reefs that are the most severely impacted, where 60% or more of the corals have bleached. When the extent of bleaching is that high, we do uh, typically measure very high levels of mortality. Following a major bleaching event in 2016, half of the shallow water corals on the Great Barrier Reef's northern region died. Mass bleaching events are becoming more common. There have now been three in just five years. So it's surprising, I think, the speed of these um, events. We're going to see more of these bleaching events in the future, tragically. And the only way to secure a future for the world's coral reefs is to deal with greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, the scale of bleaching is enormous during global bleaching events, and there's now been three of them. About 70% of the world's coral reefs undergo these major bleaching events all at the same time. So it's a problem not just for Australia, but for many, many countries, many of whom depend much more than Australia does on the uh, resources provided by a coral reef. Coral reefs are incredibly important for the food security and livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people, primarily in small, rapidly developing, relatively poor countries. The Australian Academy of Science, because questions need answers.